All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right. As promised, we said this was going to happen, y'all. We did not lie to you. We are here. We are here. And last time I checked, it was Detroit versus everybody. And this guy is all about that. Don't let don't get me started, y'all. This dude is a four time Stanley Cup champion. Claw Lemieux's worst fucking nightmare. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> D-Mac the wrestler, but he is a Detroit Red Wings legend. If you know exactly who he is, I'm going to say it for you anyway, even if you don't. Darren McCarty, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you doing today, my good sir? Absolute honor to be here, and I appreciate the persistence um, to get this done and, and being able to accommodate me. Um, obviously, big fan of what you guys do, so... Being able to share the love of what we all love, I'm happy to be here, boys. So let's get her going. Let's get it. Love to love. I like that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep the good energy going. We got we to gotta bring up a little thing. And I'm, I'm going to let my co-host, because he was the most excited about this. I'm telling you right now. This is why I, I persisted. <laughs> because he I grew this. up a Red Wings fan. I've I've always I've always loved Detroit and, and, and what the Wings, you know, were in the, back in the 90s when I was a kid. And, you know, Punching Claude Lemieux in the face was always a joy to watch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The knuckle yeah. dusters right there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on in and get it, man. Werner, you had a question for him that I thought was really intriguing. Let's go on and get this started, man. So, Darren, you know, everyone talks about the NFL and their draft process. I'm curious, what was the NHL draft process for you back in the early 90s? Yeah, it was, uh, it was different, right? So, I was... Uh, I'm born in 72, so my draft year technically as an 18-year-old was in 91, um, but you had to go in the first three rounds, so that's where all the talented guys, you know, the early bloomers, you know, the 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 stars got drafted, so I got, for me, it was, uh, I got drafted, I was the first 19-year-old drafted, which which getting drafted in the second round um, is a pretty big honor because they at the time that it was different they didn't draft got I was considered old you know almost at that at that time, but the good thing was is that I could automatically go into the minor leagues the next year right so to continue the past so for me um, I was fortunate because it was at the old Montreal Forum the draft and in Canada I was 19 so we could drink. So I remember I got drafted. I had my jersey on the whole time, and we were going bar to bar, and I was drinking with some scouts, and you know, we. So I got to experience my draft more as an adult, right? Uh, uh, with my family and stuff like this. But we had a great party. I'll always remember that. Wait, no, no, I, no. Wait, go ahead. No, go ahead, Werner. Go ahead. I got I, I'm sure you didn't have to pay for a drink that night either. Yeah. <laughs> I better not have. I was broke. <laughs> Just, when you get drafted, the, the contract isn't signed right then. You don't get the money. So you're still you're still a broke junior dude. <laughs> did you hold on? I gotta ask now. Did you run up the bill on those scouts? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> yeah, no doubt, right? Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta get the drinking in, man. I, I that's funny. He said he was drinking with the scouts. So I'm gonna switch up the. T- I'm sorry. I'm gonna switch up the tempo a little bit, man. I just want to get into something that a lot of people may not know. And if you don't know this, guys, this guy is a wrestler. He's a wrestler. We we've seen him do it. We've seen him get in the ring and get busy. He's like, I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, no, no, no. Like, I, I, I. It's sort of like me. I have a band. That's sort of like me being a musician and I travel around doing slapstick comedy and being a comedian. I'm I'm an entertainer, and if the wrestling ring, and I find myself listen, who am I to argue to find myself, you know, in situations where you get, you know, choke slammed or uh, bombed through a table by Bully Ray Dudley, and then <laughs> you get retribution and get the stun Bully Ray guy you grew up idolizing and with the Dudley Boys and put him through a table. So, um. I just find myself in situations and when you're in those situations, you got to rise to the occasion. So I say this as we record this on a Tuesday, because I'm headed to Chattanooga because my, my big thing is uh, the death match wrestling scene, ICW. Now I'm not, I don't participate, but I have two kids, the lovable psychopath, Tommy Vendetta. Mm. And why is he the lovable psychopath? Because he's my DNA. I'm the lovable psychodad. <laughs> and then the process, Malcolm Monroe the third, who are known as the Michigan Pillars. So we're we're uh, terrorizing the country on the deathmatch scene 
as a tag team, as individuals and stuff. And I'm just there to support the boys. You know, it's like uh, some people choose to drive the kids around to hockey tournaments and, you know, baseball tournaments. I, you know, just do rest independent wrestling shows. Okay. Now the psycho that they hold on. Wait, we got to unpack that a little bit. Now, now we got to unpack that a little bit. What made your, your, your kids get into that and, and something that you fostered in them? What was the moment where you sat them down and you were like, do you really want to do this? And if you want to do this, how hard are you willing to go for it? Did you have to have that talk with them before they got into professional wrestling? Or were they just like, guns are blazing, let's fucking do it? How did that conversation go? Okay, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's reverse engineer this because Tommy Vendetta, the lovable psychopath, is my kayfabe child. Yeah. Um, but the reason why he is, right, my son, who looks exactly like my son, um, and everything else is the fact of his passion for what he did, mm -hmm. for what he's doing and trying to become. I saw the passion in him like three years ago. Um, and it was something that I latched on to also with Malcolm. Um, so that's what I, I feed off of passions. And it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's in the cannabis industry, whether it's in, you know, the recovery space, you know, whether it's in, whatever people are passionate about, I'm there to support them, right? I know what I love, but it's it's cool to be a part of it. Then it's putting, you know, your passions together. I call it my tribes, you know? I just know I've been able, I've been fortunate enough to live many different lives and survive, but also not know, not know exactly what I want, but what I don't want and who I want to surround myself with. And for me, it's it's the cannabis community, it's the wrestling community, you know, it's the Comic Con community. To me, that's sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, the grind line of life, and that's where I'm the most comfortable. So, being able to try, like we're going to Chattanooga this weekend for for ICW, and and couldn't be more excited. It's it's you know like family reunion and stuff like this, and. You know, for me, it's it's the people. So I have, you know, I have a lot of sayings. One of them, um, one of them is, you can't choose your blood, but you can choose your family. So this independent wrestling scene really is part of the family. And then it expands because you see Impact. Mm -hmm. You know, I love Impact because Impact reminds me, and now TNA reminds me of like old alumni hockey or old timer hockey. It's the, the people that have been around that know what they want and are there to truly love and support each other and telling the best stories and helping the younger generations. So just to be a part of it and be asked by Scott Demore, Tommy Dreamer, and, and the whole cast of characters there, it's just such an honor to be a part of their stories because it's that's what I enjoy. I enjoy wrestling because I enjoy the stories. I don't have to like it, but it's got to make sense. Absolutely. And so that's as far as my inclusion to in it. Also, it's also got to make. Hey, come here for a minute. Oh, <laughs> hey, you know what? Here, cameo appearance. Let's do it. Here, don't knock it over. You, you fucking tyrant. <laughs> cameo appearance by the lovable psychopath. What's, What's up? up? What's up? Yeah, what up? Um, <laughs> he's getting ready. He's got a hell of a weekend. Oh yeah, busy. he's got to fight uh, the behemoth tank. Do a tag team against uh, Killer Be Kill guys, and then go to LA for Circle Six to fight Dale Patrick, the Deathmatch Jackass. Their third one, their rubber match, and these two idiots. You got a psychopath <laughs> and a jackass going at it. So I'm not going to be there for the Sunday one, but I prepared him enough for this that he's ready to go out there, and the boys are just spreading their wings. So um, that Tommy's also my young boy. So he had to come and pick up the laundry because I need it washed before the weekend. Oh, there I'm you go. There I'm you go. Pay your dues. We're keeping the traditions. Traditions are alive. All right. Be safe. That's what I'm uh, talking it's about. It's in there. See it? Yeah. I love the way he slid into the frame like a psychopath. You just saw his head slide in from the side. <laughs> <laughs> you should say, I'd check him out, man. And like anybody go on IWTV, look up the ICW, or just go online, look up Tommy Vendetta, Lobo Psychopath. It's. And it's the bottom line. It's it's the passion. Yes. And 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 Malcolm also. Malcolm. Uh, except, it, except Malcolm's. Uh, Malcolm's more of the, more of the brains. Tommy's more of the brawn. Okay. Okay. And it's super cool that because of their passion, you're you're giving them the platform. You're shouting them out. You're getting behind them, and that's that's really cool because 
there's a lot of veterans in the industry that they don't do that. They don't they don't uplift the next generation. So for you to not even be like an active wrestler and for you boosting the next generation of pro wrestlers, that's amazing. I just want to say that. That was super cool to fucking see right there. That was dope. So I appreciate that, but you know what? It's, it's, I mean, why why should any of us do things that we don't like? You know, like mm. like I get it if it's your shoot job and stuff, but it's different. But why should you, where you choose to spend your time, and not with people that like want to be want to you want to push to be better? That's that's what I love about the deathmatch community. Because think about it, right? You got to make me believe that there's two guys that want to kill each other with weapons that I know <laughs> are realistic that could kill each other. So it's they have to protect each other. So really, it's the dichotomy that they're actually the safer that you are making it look like they kill each other. And it's the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, the best part, and that for me, coming from a, a sport where those fight pictures you see up there, those are, that's real, right? I got scars, I got surgeries, I got everything because that stuff's real. This is real too as far as the, what happens, but at the end of the day, you're hot, two guys that are out there uh, killing each other, for lack of a better term, hog and say, what a great show. And it's all about the presentation. Right, that's what I love about wrestling. So, just I try to do that in life and everything that I do. Just surround myself with people that that want to do it the same way that I do. Absolutely, love to hear it. Love to hear it. I'm gonna toss it over to Werner. Let's go, man. So you you mentioned a lot about passions. I'm curious how how has it been with Woodward Sports being actual to talk about other than just hockey, like football and 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 with the Tigers. Yeah, no, it's great. Obviously, being, a, you know, everybody who knows me deep down, I grew up across the border. You know, I consider myself Detroit's favorite stepchild because I grew up in Leamington, which, give or take 10 minutes, was 40 minutes from my my house to Joe Louis Arena. I grew up with, you know, Ernie Harwell, you know, my my dad, you know, uh, J.P. McCarthy on WJR and, you know, different things like that. I'm just ingrained. My first love's the Tigers, 84, stuff like this, so... I've always been dialed in, and it's refreshing. I think that the best part about doing Woodward Sports is the, the big, uh, big D Energy 11 to 1 is my partner, Neil Rule, and Betts Raxter, and Mike Gentry, and the guys that, that we do it together with. So um, the fans make everything. If you join us in, you know, any day on YouTube and you get in the chat, you're probably going to get read because we're really interactive that way. But it's refreshing. And it's also refreshing because all the teams are getting good. Right, and it's better than listening to the ticket. And, right. And well, I mean, it's 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 an option. Mm -hmm. I'm all about you know that that that's your decision, right? We're all we all have. I always say, enjoy my truth. I mean, it just it gives you a different option, and before there wasn't an option. So, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different shows running throughout the day, and it's only getting bigger and better. And so it's it's you know something that I, I'm proud to be a part of. Cool info. All right, let's let's talk about that '97 Cup win. Uh, since you had the game-winning, game-sealing goal, how how big was the ego a after that? Like, how long into the year were you like, oh, I scored the game-winning, the series-winning goal? You know, it's one of those things. No matter what, anything, how stupid you do, that that once they put that in the Hall of Fame, they can't take it away from you. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm sort of like one of those guys that like you know like look at you and give you like uh you know you know i do have to remind you i'll remind you if i have to but i think steve eisman said it the best thank god you don't have to do it again he's <laughs> always right so i like that <laughs> hey every blind squirrel finds a nut dude and every you know what here's the thing wish for it and you know what you never know when that opportunity is but you know small story and i tell this in my book my last fight true story of a hockey rock star which, by the way, I just turned into a 180-page graphic novel, which Ooh. if you go to McCartyComic.com, uh, we're doing a Kickstarter, and we'll have those available starting December for the Christmas season. So it adds on to the stories and, and different stuff like this. But like I, I say, anything you put in, you know, when you ask, why do you deserve it? What did you put in to get out? So for me, a lot of people don't understand is that the years that we lost in 95 – the Jersey in the finals in 96, Colorado in the conference finals. I went to Sweden both years uh, to do hockey school with eight, nine, 10, 11 year olds. And no, I wasn't in the hockey. I wasn't teaching the hockey school. I was in the hockey school. And that move that I made, if we didn't do that for five or 10 minutes, every session, 
for so it's two months worth, you know, five days a week, pull it in, push it out, pull it in, push it up. It's muscle memory. You know, I went to dump it in. Everybody wanted me to dump it in and bing, bang, boom. Next thing you know, I got him beat and, you know, score a double pirouette. And like Stevie said, thank God I didn't have to do it twice. <laughs> wow. There it is. There it is. So you have your uh, Michigan Cannabis Community group on Facebook. So I want to speak to, you know, what has marijuana meant to you in regards to just your health, your mental health, everything, because I know you're a huge advocate for it. You know, we, you was lighting up a little bit. I don't know if you still got a little bit left, but, yeah, I just want no, to know. I, you know, that, <laughs> that, that one last, that was a little sunshine. Yeah. Number four. I enjoy that in the afternoon, when I, especially when I got, you know, different things to do. So it's all about, you know, you know, getting educated and medicated and knowing your system and and for different ways. For me, I needed, let's show you right here. This, if you've heard of RSO, Rick uh -huh. Simpson oil, which is a plant. Push down, concentrate, you know, diluted to the most powerful impact. So imagine being put on one of these for seven straight days to get the physical addiction of alcohol away. For me, I was fortunate that my wife's a nurse and I was able to detox at the house, but I was able to get that the alcohol. So can, cannabis took that away. But I realized when I started in, and created the Darren McCarty brand that um, it was to start the conversation. What's the easiest way? And and the easiest way to start the conversation to somebody because I'm not worried about the most educated person or somebody who's been around it or has tried it. It's somebody. It's it's at the base level. And to me, it was a topical. So if you had an uh, say you had a sore wrist, and I could put a something like CBD without any THC hemp on your wrist, and you could go, oh my gosh, that feels better. Then we start the conversation. So that's why I created a roll on, you know, um, you know, I was proud of all the medicine that I created when, when Pencanic, um was producing my product up until April, a year and a half ago. So of 2021, we had to uh, sever the relationship. Uh, so I've waited a year and a half, but hopefully uh, something relaunches the brand real soon, but it's all just education for me to know what I want. The Darren McCarty brand, and, and when I release things or stuff that works for me, I'm an alcoholic insomniac. Obviously, with the education, we hear more and more about the CBN, which is a CBD part of the mm -hmm. uh, you know family part of the plant that helps with sleep and sedatives. So other than that, it's, it's, it's trying to figure out and start a conversation and being comfortable with conversations. So along with advocacy for the education of the plant, it's also to don't tell me what, tell me who. And if I can sort of steer you in the direction that I go on who I mess with, which products I use, because it's not just about mine. It's about everybody out there and what it can be. And um, sometimes people need the narrative because they don't understand. Maybe people aren't in it, this business for, for the same purpose that they would be. So um, to me, it's simple. There's money, compassion, compassion, money. I'm in this category. I try to surround myself with everybody else that looks at the plant, the compassion part of it first and lets the dollar follow. These other ones can go do their thing, but please don't do it near us or else we have a problem. Okay. So outside of your product, just a bonus question, because I know Werner has a question about this as well. Um, like, What is a product that you would sing the praises of outside of your own? Yeah, well, I've, absolutely. So if we're talking what, what – uh, Name you want to you want a flower you want an edible you want to for the sake know, of conversation so for me for me loud loud farms right which loud is farms. a Moto Rebel genetic I've um, known them a long time they they a part of my beginning journey Aaron from Moto Rebel had, had given me some some seeds I'm a big uh, Death Star fan so they have uh, something that's out right now which is uh, Jar Jar stinks. Uh, which, <laughs> yeah, which is a uh, chem dog, uh, um, a chem dog uh, Death Star uh, cross, and they also just came out with this Kyber crystal, which is fire. It's a GMO. So, um, so they that that's a, a strain. Um, as far as edibles, I'm a big fan of. There's these Mojo chocolates that come individually, like little Snicker pat Snicker bars that are that are 20 milligrams each that tastes just like Snickers. So I'm a big chocolate guys, as far as concentrate, um, you know, I dabble in concentrates when people talk to me um, about it. I, I relate 
that flowers like drinking beer and concentrates like doing shots. Mm. But, you know, I'm a big fan of this brand, which I'm a part of. It's called Unrivaled. Okay. Uh, no pun intended to whatever else. Just So it's all on a lot of different things. And it's, uh, you know, that gives you an idea of, you know, w- what it w- what it looks like. Here's the whole thing. It just starts the conversation. You should feel free to have the conversation. And maybe you want to know where to go. Because what I was told initially is now that I know the secret, it's my responsibility with what I do with it. And I choose to, um, you know, blare it out to everybody because my number one concern is always remember what it was like to not think I had an option or not mm-hmm. think I had hope. And I remember that. I remember that. I don't want anybody to ever have to feel that way. I want them to know that they have an option. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you had a question about this too, Warner, because I know you were curious. So- so, so with the conversation, I'm curious how how has it been working with state regulators and and state lawmakers when when you had the Darren McCarty brand? Yeah, no, I mean it. You know that wasn't wasn't an issue. And and here's the thing that 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 line's always moving. So you got to make sure that your uh, your person that's uh, you know uh, is your uh, you know in charge of in charge of that. You know. And, um, I forget what that person's called. Uh, the compliance officer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's why, they, and it's all about your team. So as long as you're compliant, you go with the flow. So that that's never a pr- problem. The problem for me is never having enough product. I could never keep product in. So I had to go to somebody that would commit to making, commit to being able to produce because you put it in my brand and it's gone. Not just because there's one, okay, I get, I'm a celebrity, I have a brand, but number two is I am the brand and the medicine behind it backs it up. Absolutely. And and quick question, let's, let's get it back a little bit loose again. Let's get fun again. Is it one person in particular that you go, I would love to smoke weed with that person? Is it one person? (laughs) My bucket list is still Willie. Really? Because I want to oh. I want to smoke weed with Willie, and I haven't done it yet, and I I almost had the opportunity. So, um, I have Snoop a bunch of times, and and you know uh, Jamie Johnson was a big one out the bucket list. Uh, Peter Dante, reggae guy, was was out from Mama's Boy was always huge, and now he's you know a buddy and stuff like this. Rob Van Dam ah. was awesome. Oh. So, um, yeah. So most so so Willie Nelson's probably the only one. You know, jelly roll we have, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I I, uh, I love it. Now you know, we- I, I love it. I think that the, that's the thing about the cannabis plant is it combines everybody, no matter what your race, religion, or color, and it just it doesn't care. It's there for you, and all you got to do is find what works for you. Okay, now with Willie, are you hot boxing or are you doing like an on stage? Smoke Whatever session? Willie wants to do, man. <laughs> <he's a> man. <laughs> You do whatever they want to do. Like Jamie Johnson smokes bowls, so we were smoking bowls. There you go. <laughs> I love to. Hear. I prefer a blunt, but that's just me. I know it's not the healthiest, but that's who I am. Yeah, shouts out to all the blunts, man. Go ahead, Warner. <laughs> so I, I want to get into to the greatest hockey fight of all time in 1997, uh, that March fight where every where it was clearing benches. I'm curious, what was it like seeing Patrick Waugh and Mike Vernon fight? Uh-oh. Well, I mean, I make a joke when I do my slapstick comedy tours. Uh, when you're having a bad day, it could always be worse. And I don't mean because I scored like a whole ton of goals and a hat trick on Patrick Waugh and stuff. That's, you know, just exhibit one. But he got his ass kicked by a 50-year-old midget cowboy, Mike <laughs> Vernon, and then came back the next year and fought his little kid brother, Chris Osgood, you know, a little 12-year-old, and got his ass kicked <laughs> <in there> too. <laughs> We all know Chris Osgood never had a fight in his life except for his eight-year-old sister, and we know he lost that. We all lose that to our sisters. So he's cutting a promo I mean, you right now. It could always be Patrick Watt. Could always be worse. Karma's a bitch. Just remember that. Karma's real. So keep your shit straight. Back to you, Can we just clip that for me? <laughs> oh, we're clipping that. We're clipping that. That was oh, great. Yeah, please. Oh. I mean, that's a good one to clip too because I got, I got it. I rolled it pretty good. <laughs> The way just he said bit, it, boys. he just it's said a bit, it with it's the a bit. <laughs> my, my, hey, enjoy boy. my truth. That's you... the way I saw it. Did I see it wrong? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Maybe your truth matches mine. <laughs> I try to match our truths, but sometimes people are dumb. Word, 
Word, I don't know if you have a follow up to that or not, but that was amazing. <laughs> You got to get depends yourself which, together. Hey, it depends which part of this brain you tickle, boys. It's up to you. <laughs> it's all. I told you. You asked me earlier. Is there anything off limits? I go. No. You no. Just gotta find the right thing. Oh man. Oh god. So you're like an escape room. You're in it. How do you want to get out? Yeah, that's you're true. The easy way out, or you going deeper? Yeah, he's he's not hugging Patrick no time soon. I'm. <laughs> that's what I gathered from that entire conversation. <laughs> I'm just. And dude, tell me when there wasn't some. We say something on Big D Energy. It's not factual. It's factual. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And speaking of that, that grit you have, man, and you just talking about that and cutting that amazing promo for us, by the way. I want to talk about just the city of Detroit. What do? You, what are a few things you feel personifies the city of Detroit? Detroit sports, Detroit culture, and what are you the most proud of when it comes to playing for the Red Wings? and being a part of, you know, Stanley Cup history, basically. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got to understand, from my perspective, being that kid that grew up across the border, give or take 10 minutes for the border, my house was 40 minutes to Joe Louis Arena, is that I was a Red Wing fan when they were the Dead Wings. I mean, yeah, we couldn't win a game, but we could beat the crap out of people. And when Steve Eiserman came, it was just something that all my friends, you know, it was almost like to spite, too, because all my cousins and friends were Toronto and Montreal fans and, and and it was something that I, you know, always had the dream and focus of making it to the NHL. And, you know, obviously Detroit would be in a bucket list because it's a hometown, but I know the history. I know what it meant. And I think the biggest thing that we're proud of for all of us is the fact that we, I, I take pride in my life of, of shoving it up people's asses. When you tell me I can't do something, I'm, I know that I'm the only one that controls that. So it's up to me whether I do or not. And winning in 97 after being doubted and, not being tough enough, this, that, or the other thing is something that we'll always cherish and you can always go down, go back to, and, you know, some, some things you can try to draw to in life. So um, I consider myself Detroit, Michigan's favorite stepchild for a reason. I think that the one thing, no matter where it is, and this is a great thing, is that if you come here and you work hard and you put in that effort, just like on the line and something, then you will be loved. And if you love back, then you are part of the family. It's it's an accepted, you know, it's it's such an acceptance space. And uh, you know, I always have a saying that I'm a battery in the people, you know, of Detroit and Michigan and Wing Wheel Nation across this great country and this great, you know, planet are my power. Mm-hmm. So um they allow me to get out of myself and and know that, you know, maybe sometimes that we share special moments and I look to see how we can connect and and just, you know, be transparent in my journey and try to be as honest as I can. And, you know, accountability is a big thing. And I try to lead by example. So I'm a big believer that if I say it, I have to do it twice because too many people don't. Absolutely. Now, I got to do this to him, Mort. I got to do it to him. What is one of the wildest stories you can tell about the Joe off the ice? Oh. <laughs> what? oh. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> Wild, uh, oh, well, I, I don't know if this is a wild story or whatever, but it, this might tell you how far things have progressed in the game. So my first year is 93, 94, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. I know it's like the first home game and stuff like this. So you're 21 years old, um, getting ready to play for your childhood team and stuff like this. And it's after warm up. And so the way that the locker room used to be, it used to be smaller, but you had to go through the laundry room to get to the sort of um to, to sort of like what was considered a lounge which was not a lounge it was it was literally a looked like maybe six stalls could have fit in there and then it went to the stick room right but this is 1993 and you walked into the stick room and there was mark Howe, uh steve chase on ray shepherd bob prober sheldon kennedy all smoking cigarettes Uh-oh. you know between periods <laughs> if you're trying to get your stick done and stuff like this and you're like that was like sort of the norm for the first few years you know that you'd have guys sitting outside you know the locker room or in another locker room or whatever that you know smoke cigarettes and um to me that was just sort of like holy cow i you know it's a it's a man's league now 
Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I know that's that's tame, but that's just a, a good way to set it up. I'll give you a little appetizer. I can't give you the whole meal. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, shouts out to the appetizers out there. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> so obviously to start the season, there was a little bit of a cloud around Mike Babcock. I know there was a lot of bad stuff around Mike Babcock in Detroit. I'm curious, why wasn't there a player-led revolt against him and going to Ken asking, Holland? So you got to do the math, man. I retired in 09. All this stuff happened in 12 and 13, you know, with the frauds and stuff. And that was after I was gone, after my watch. What I what I could tell you, because I won a cup with Mike Babcock when my comeback in 08 mm-hmm. and lost in 09, is here's the difference between Scotty Bowman, the greatest coach and psychologist of all time. <laughs> Yeah, Mike Babcock and Scotty Bowman did the exact same thing, right? Mm-hmm. You knew Scotty Bowman liked to collect rings, and you know what? You might you were the brunt of whatever else because he felt that was the best for the team to win. Mike Babcock looked at it, and when if you don't do it my way, nobody wins. It was his way or the highway. Uh-huh. That's how it, it sort of looked at it. And and also, too, coming into this year, going back, and he was going to coach Columbus, I was the first one to say, hey, everybody deserves a second chance. Let's just see if it's changed. And I think the biggest thing is his lack of self-awareness. Okay. That's his biggest downfall. Okay. His lack of self-awareness. You know, some people say that, you know, it's it's an ego and stuff like this, but I I don't think he really realized that what he did was wrong. Again, after coming off of what he had to redeem himself from. You're talking to a guy who's gone to four rehabs and has asked for forgiveness, not permission more times than anything. But I know when to shut it down and, and we're learning the mistakes. It goes back to what Bob Probert taught me. So mm-hmm. obviously it was felt that the, the lesson wasn't learned, but I think it's just lack of self-awareness than anything more on the malicious end, if that makes sense. Okay. No doubt. And speaking of which, like, who were some mentors you had along the way outside of that? Like, who who helped mold you into the player that you eventually would become and win cups? You know, who who taught you everything, the tricks of the trade? I think the biggest influence as a pro, like, was Shanny. Just how to be, you know, Shanny and Joey. Joey yeah. Kosher and Brennan Shanahan. Just Joey taught how to, you know, sort of look over the flock and uh, Shanny taught how to incorporate picking your spot and being a power forward and stuff like this. Um, Chris Draper, you know, obviously as a as a man and a human being and a brother who always had mine and Ozzy's back. And um, but the biggest, you know, obviously as as I think today, the accountability it was uh, Steve Eiserman too. So I give a lot, and also to to Dino Cicerelli and Paul Coffey mm. um, were huge especially early on and and things that maybe I didn't learn the lesson early and up on, but to this day, things that they've always told me, and that's why they're friends, you know, to this day. Huge influences. Absolutely. Now, is it any mistakes you felt you make you made along the way in your career that you kind of look back on and go, ah, maybe I could have done that a little bit differently, or do you just not regret anything? Come on, man, let's think back. What if I, dude, lifestyle. I know what I knew then, no now. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, I gave it, you know, I think there is 10% left if I would have, you know, took care of myself better and not, and not, you know, got out of the FOMO. And, you know, I lived for a long time, but by the mantra is that, like, I didn't deserve it and I didn't want it to pass. And I couldn't pass up the story for all my buddies and stuff like this to my detriment. But I knew what I was getting into. The one thing with me is I'll do the crime, but I'll do the time. And, now it's, you know, I'm 51 years old, going to be 52 next year. And it's like, I just know what I don't want more than what I want. And, you know, would I do things different? Yeah. Would I, you know, would it be nicer to see what would have happened if I would have like fully had the commitment, you know, to just talking, but again, then, then, you know, I mean, but you can't argue, right. Because that's my path and my, my life's path. So I wouldn't change that. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. I, it, uh, it's something that I that I hope moving day to day now is that that I don't have to answer that question. I just do what I need to do. Yeah, and I got one more, and I'm going to give it over to Werner for a second. Do you think 
hockey needs more entertainers right now. More guys like you do. Oh, they? yeah, it's, it's too <laughs> robotic, and it's the way the game is, man. There's, they're younger, they're more talented, it, but it, they're more robots. There's no individuality, you know? Like, I, I think they got to, you know, let, let them, you know, express or take more, you know, to the individual and show more of their personalities. And But they got to allow them, but they don't do it, right? They don't, like, they don't have a, we had the post bar downtown where everybody, including everybody that worked at Joe Louis Arena used to meet right down by Cobra Arena for years before we won the cups and stuff. There's camaraderie with that. Times have changed. It doesn't allow it as much. Mm-hmm. So that's how you it know, is. different excuse me, different rules of the game. Do you do you think a change of commissioner would uh change that? Yeah, but that's never happened. Well, <laughs> it's never happening. Not, not well, to the I wish of fans. Even, it's not even worth questioning it. <laughs> he said, I, that's not happening. That is just not happening. Okay, so we're going to go back to pro wrestling real quick. If you, even though Thank I think. God, something I like. I think, <laughs> I think the answer is obvious, but I'm still going to ask anyway. If you could have one, well, now that you didn't told us earlier you could have one death match with an nhl player from your time who would it be (laughs) you know like i think the answer changes because it have to be as entertaining i think claude the view makes the most sense but it's where we're at right now and if you haven't seen unrivaled on ESPN, mm-hmm. go see it because that was done. Tw- the interview twenty five, where him and I sat down twenty five years after the March twenty, March twenty six ninety seven event, and you know what? It, he got to you know tell you his truth and stuff like this. So I think the fact that we could we could be able to construct such a great story because of the where we're at right now, that's what you need. Mm-hmm. If because you you think. Um, we were going to kill each other because we're supposed to kill each other in the whole scheme of things and payback. And I think that'd be a great idea. He could bring in all his guys and, <laughs> you know, I could bring in a bunch of my guys and then, oh man, might be onto something. Might need something yeah, to new wings that. order. That, that, that's sort of the <laughs> obvious choice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see that. We got to put that together. We got to get the finances together to make that happen. We can make that happen in Detroit. Mm. I mean, Cobo Hall is still a right. Well, I think it's now the TCF Huntington. You gotta also, here's the question: find a spot that that allow you to do death matches that could hold the venue that you want. There's bigger, deeper questions to answer, but hey, I like where your head's at. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure if we pay enough money, everyone will look it's the wrong, you know, the other way. If you got the dollars, it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. He's like, just drop the money on the table and look the other way. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, Mike Duggan will just look the other way, you know? So do you have a favorite deathmatch wrestler in particular? Uh, probably of all time, Matt Tremont, the, the bulldozer, but he Ooh. just actually over Halloween was buried. So now it's, oh. uh, he's got a new kid, but it's Matt Tremont. Um, you know, him, Eric Ryan has always been a favorite of mine. Um, he's the, uh, king of the death match. So, um, there's a lot of guys. I got so much of John Wayne Murdoch, the Duke, um, <clears throat> looks like that Oliver Anthony dude. <clears throat> so there's a lot of great guys. I love, love and respect. You know, one of the greatest villains out there in wrestling is Atticus Kogar. Mm-hmm. And I've been scored twice by him and stuff. Um, so, but I also tubed him hard in RPW. I got a little payback. Oh, Actually, Ricky back. Shea Page helped me, and I see that they're fighting at the end of the year, which should be exciting because they used to be in the same faction. So there's a lot of good stuff going on <coughs> in the deathmatch team. So is there a match potentially with Nick Gage on the horizon then? Ooh. I don't think with me, maybe with Tommy or maybe with Malcolm. Um but they're doing a lot of great stuff with GCW. You know, that's that Brett Lauderdale has done such a great thing with that promotion, especially worldwide. And, you know, second gear crew. I love those guys, Mance Warner and uh, Matt Justice and the one called Manders. They're, they're old school. They remind me of old school, just brawler wrestlers. And, 
Um, so GCW, I mean, you never know. Tommy's been on there before. Malcolm's been on there before. So you never know if he might appear. Okay. So if we, if you could drop yourself in any era of professional wrestling and any promotion you wanted to, where would you drop yourself at? I would probably drop myself in D generation X. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I think that, you know, like Road Dog, or not Road, yeah, Road Dog, or like between Road Dog and, and X-Pac, I could have been like an X-Pac. Maybe I could have been a Triple H. Oh. Yeah, okay. I think Triple H, you're out, bro. I'll take Stephanie. <laughs> I'll take Stephanie and, and, and Brett and the boys. He said, you and your nose got to go. You're, you're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all love. It's all love, man. Imagine love. him coming out. At the Joe and Degeneration X, that would have been insane. That would have been absolutely yeah. insane. That's a missed opportunity. Was was there a push by WWE hey, back you know then what? to I'll get you there? You want, to, you want to see one to throw into the universe? And I haven't said anything about it, but you know how Edge is in AEW right now, right? And he's such mm-hmm. a he's such a mark for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, like there's like maybe a Maple Leaf, and because they get they're good, and and the uh wings get good and there's that rivalry there maybe i'll have to come out and whack him with a chair for being disrespectful in detroit mm. maybe somebody got to i'm all for it up for him. i'm just saying <laughs> we need that rivalry slots. to come back we just get a run in at a uh, full gear but here's <laughs> hey guys but here's the one thing i'll let you in on it um i got this sick twisted uh my sick twisted sort of uh thing is that i like to take finishers from all the guys that i respect and love mm-hmm. so i'd have to get speared by edge that'd have to go on the bucket list oh <laughs> okay 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 go ahead well, i'll Arnold. take the loss bro but i'm going over i don't have to get over but i'm going over <laughs> that's absolutely hilarious go ahead so uh in 97 during that time did wwe try to reach out to you to try to do an angle no, we did. We have. Uh, there's video that you'll see of some bras or SmackDowns or myself, and I. It was in '99 because it was myself, Mike Canuble, Matthew Danden, and Bill Ramper, and I saw the picture the other day. But I hit. Uh, Bob Holly tried to hit D'Lo Brown, the hometown kid, with a stick, and I pulled it out of his hand and broke it over Holly. And, you know, I've done a couple uh, stuff. We were there for the Stone Cold. Zamboni smash and it was awesome. I I was Stone Cold, Dandy was the Rock, and Canuba was Mankind, and we hit him with chairs every day. So it was awesome. <laughs> so, would you do a boiler room match? Would you be a part of the 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 return of the boiler room match if somebody wanted to bring you on for it? Hundred percent depends. <laughs> hey, here's the thing: got to make sense. What's the story? Why are we doing it? Right. So I'm down for pretty much anything as long as it makes sense and. You know, I'm not looking to die, but I mean, I ain't afraid to bleed. Uh, that's what it's all about. That's what good it's all mentality about. Mentality to have. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, what do you got? Any more questions, my good sir? So, what are your thoughts on today's wings? Progress on perfection. Obviously, look at a year ago, right now, how much better is this team than they were? Right. All you got to do is listen. It's hashtag Wiser Plan 1919. Listen mm-hmm. to what he says. I, Darren McCarty, are, have took the clock off and put them on playoff watch, expecting them to make the playoffs. Stevie's not even sold to that. But how they started the season with what they've added into Brinkett, um, they're better. There's still questions in net and stuff like this, but they're in it. They're in it. I expect them to battle for that playoff spot, and it's it's progress. There's still about three, four, two, three, three, four years away from actually being – a true contender, but they're going to get there because Stevie won't be denied. Okay. No. See, see, now I got to ask. I, I, I know I, I got to do it. What about my Hawks? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, dude, I mean, the, the league can't, like, help you out any better, especially with all the bullshit you you put the stain. You know, I'm, just, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> you got Bedard. You got lucky. He's, He's there. A player. He's there. <laughs> you know, it's just progress, not perfection. And, but a lot of respect for Luke Richardson. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a coach that guys will play for. And, um, yeah, you, you're still, you know, I think you're a couple of years behind us. But, you got, dude, you, you got a mainstay. You got a centerpiece. He's 18 years old. What do you want? 
Do you think he's generational, though? Oh, absolutely. Okay, okay, all right. Just give him time. Uh, <laughs> we're impatient here <laughs> why, in Chicago. Why do you want generational at 18? <laughs> look at LeBron, look at Michael Jordan, look at Gretzky, look at this. There's, wait till he's 21. <laughs> yeah, that's give yeah, him a couple years to figure it out. Give him a couple yeah. years to grow into being a man. His body hasn't caught up to his talent yet. Wait till that happens. All he needs is a like, Coney on, dog. Man. That's like, all he needs. We're gonna send him. We gonna send I mean, him. I thought I thought you were gonna tell me that you were Z Mac, I had to tell you, being from Chicago, thank you. And I'd say, You're welcome. And people go, What are you thanking him for? And I said, Retiring. <laughs> you can win. You can have the Bowman effect and you could win. You never beat me. So just wait your turn. Yeah. You got the the centerpiece. If you don't want them, give them to us. But those wings ain't flying no more, man. What you want me to say? The wings, <laughs> what? What? Huh? Well, we're flying. I ain't say nothing. I ain't say nothing. Ooh. I was, I was, uh, I was talking to somebody next to me. That's who I was. That's what I thought. <laughs> I mean, it must have been the hour time change delay. <laughs> I've seen your matches. I know what you'll do. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of it. Not my dog. Not my fight. <laughs> Absolutely. If you well, got a good one, like, I mean, don't second guess this kid, man. Like, at least give him a freaking hole. You can, I mean, it's his first year in a brand new men's league that he's playing against guys the average of eight, ten years older than him. God dang. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody gets slack nowhere. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to be good. I, I'm just, it's Chicago fans. We're in pace. We've been through enough. We've been through oh, enough. You've been through oh, enough. like Detroit hasn't <laughs> been through enough? Come on, bro. Are you kidding me? He's three cups in the last 10 years. It's 12 <laughs> years. Eat a bullet. <laughs> plums. Plums. Eat plums. <laughs> prunes. Eat a whole bag of prunes and get diarrhea, my friend. So, so since he asked that question, can I, I'm, I'm going to ask this. Kenny Omega there, not swear. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask this question. Was Jeremy Roenick afraid of you? Uh, well, no, we, we used to battle. He, he was too busy running uh, Constantine up through the glass, and those guys going head-to-head. We had a hell of a lot of respect for each other. Okay. I would, no, JR wasn't scared of me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but he knew that, you know, he was going to bring it like I was going to bring it. Like, it was a respect. We've always had a great respect for each other. No, but shouts out to that. So I want to ask one more question, and then we could go ahead and get moving. Because you do consume pro wrestling, but you you love the deathmatch scene more. If you're still keeping up with mainstream wrestling, where do you feel? Right. Where do you feel the top two promotions in the country right now, which is WWE and AEW? Where do you feel they well, can improve you, their products? Well, AEW needs to, as we always say, the storylines. I mean, the best storylines on the on the in the are are Impact. Uh, TNA, mm-hmm. whatever, like that, as far as long term stories. Um, like right now, AEW, it's it just like, man, dude, like, co- where's Wardlow? Like, I mean, I know they're putting him back in a little bit and stuff like this, but holy dropping the ball. Like, I just don't, it <laughs> seems like, at least with WWE, there's a long term. We know we're trying to get to WrestleMania. The question is, is it going to be the bloodline? Yeah, and Cody, or is it The Rock, or whatever? What are we going to get? Um, you know, the Judgment Day and all the, you know, Seth and Cody, like, you know, everybody teaming up. That's sort of still fresh. The NXT and the call-ups and the way they're moving the belts and the way people are going up and down keeps it fresh if you like that. Um, you know, WWE is the monolith, right? That's what you're not compared to. I think that, you know, building the stars, like, a lot of times, I mean, it, it makes me question the direction of what AEW, but I mean, like Miro and Andrade, I'm big fans of them, but what are they doing? Um, you know, ROH, New Japan, all that different stuff. It's, it's, you know what, that's the whole thing. It's so much easier on the deathmatch scene and on the independent scene to follow guys than it is sort of stories, you know, sort of jumping around or where they're going to go. So I'll still pay attention, mm-hmm. right? Um, I try to watch everything. I mean, um, I watch all the update shows and Angle shows. Like, Angle's a good buddy of mine, uh, so he'll keep me updated with what I miss. But, I mean, honestly, like, I'm more dialed into Thursday night with ROH New Japan than I, uh, than, and Impact than I am anything else. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. 
you know, New Japan is doing good stuff right now. I can't lie. Yeah, they They're are. Doing great stuff right now. And TNA is going and, to. And, but, and, and it's cool now with NXT and just stuff like that. Like, you know, you, you're familiar with Julian, but the, the integration of some of these Japanese stars, it's becoming more like mainstream of learning some new talent and stuff. So um, I think the question is, is that, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, like I said, but I, I'd like to know, like, just tell me a story <coughs> and have it make sense. And you feel like that's where AEW is just kind of lacking right now. Yeah. <clears throat> that commitment. They're just throwing so much, you know, things on the wall right now. Holy cow. Going from MJF, never wrestling anybody to, to wrestling everybody, including like, it's almost like, Oh, here, Kenny Omega, you had this streak. You had this streak here. Let's go give the payoff to something that could have been a month. Dude. I would have paid attention. I'm GF Kenny Omega cutting each other up for a month. Mm. I mean, it just seems that they're that good point. There's a little bit more miss. That's why I offered Tony Khan. You need me to get speared by Edge in the Detroit Red Wings, Toronto Maple Leafs. When you come to town, I'm your guy. That's storyline. Uh, see, free creative right here. He's giving yeah. them free creative. Free creative. <laughs> come on now. But I still, I still like it, dude. I mean, you know, I just, I think that I, like everybody else is like. Where are all these different people? Like Miro, I'm a huge Miro guy. Yeah, he's amazing. You can't give me enough Miro. Wardlow. Come on, man. It, like, he's a machine. I mean, there's a guy in the Independence called Shane Mercer, um, the Iron Demon, mm -hmm. who's like just a freak of strength. Um, that's what he reminds me. He can do like 450s with a guy suplex off the top ropes and – he can lift up the bleachers and he throws guys <laughs> like rows into the stands. It's unbelievable. That's what Wardlow reminds me of. Like guys like this, they tell real stories. So you see him on GCW also. You got to you got to get over there to GCW. I don't care what anybody says. You got to get over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all, hey, dude, all in due time. I, I mean, like I said, Brett knows what he's doing. He knows when, whenever you know. I'm sure sooner than later with Tommy or whatever like that, but it's all in due time. I mean, it's the wrestling's like cannabis. You just gotta like, you know, you know, patient, resilient. No doubt. All right, weren't there any more questions? We 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 don't want to hold too long. <laughs> who's 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 on your Michigan pro wrestling Mount Rushmore? Mm. Well, uh, I'm a big, you know, I've always been a big uh, Kevin Nash guy. Um, Motor City Machine Guns. Oh yeah, okay. Uh -huh. You know those uh, those guys definitely. I mean, other I, you know, and I won't put um, you know, sort of uh, you know, like obviously, you know, the Sabus and the Van Dams and the guys that have come out of here, you know, that did the ECW thing. Um, you know, you know, guys that that I do respect. You know, I've always been big fans of theirs, so. Um, Rhino, Rhino's a good buddy of mine. So Terry Garen, um, what he does down in IWR, you got people got to check that out because he's a legend. On the deathmatch scene, I don't think DBA, um, most dangerous man, and and Chuck Stein, uh, pretty white boy. Check him out. He's finally getting some of his flowers after doing it for so many years. There you Bunch go. of sickos. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way his eyebrows went up when he said sickos. <laughs> Well, we all are. It's my family. Uh, absolutely. That's my family. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, actually, you know what? I, I thought of something, and, and this is a good question to, to, to end it with. What is one photo that you've seen of yourself that if for any reason, unfortunately, you passed away today, tomorrow, you would want people to remember you by? What is one photo well, that you would want people to remember you by? I think it's the same one um, that I've believe that i'm trying to get in every man woman cave restaurant bar in the state of michigan or wherever there's wing wheel nation it's the fight picture of me over lemieux march 26 97 <laughs> Shannon, yeah! Dallas, Boy, you know vernon i think that just tells a story because i call it red wing d-day and that's where it changed you know mm -hmm. not just the fact that there was a fight the fact that we won the game you know i always say i i got to slay the dragon and beating up Lemieux and also scoring the OT goal. I only got four minutes for up and a 10 minute misconduct. You want to say karma's real, karma's real. So that changed because we went on to win the cup, you know, a few months later that changed everything. So 
that's the one I think will be the legacy. A story of ass kicking and triumph in Detroit hockey. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. So even though everybody knows who the hell you are, still tell people where to find you and any products you have or anything like that before we get moving. DarrenMcCarty.com. Darren McCarty 4 on the X machine, Twitter, whatever you call it like that. That's the one I control. You can hit the blue check marks, real Darren McCarty, fish Darren McCarty. Facebooks and stuff like that, I don't control it. But because we're here today, I'll give you a little DMAC underscore OSB is my bootleg account. Oh, don't tell everybody. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyways, okay. I hope to see everybody there. We'll catch you out, out and about. Woodward Sports, you can find me Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, Big D Energy, 11 to 1 o'clock. So, um, you know, the, be- the best place is on the X machine. Aaron McCarty four, and you can see the whole interaction between all of us uh, in the uh, wrestling world because that's uh, that's usually where the uh, chosen family goes. There it is. There you have it. All right, guys. Well, it's time to get up out of here. We don't want to hold this guy up. You know, he he got some doobie snacks to get to. We don't want to hold him up too long. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, for Mr. Starks. Always do. Hey, always <laughs> remember, I, I'm – Never high. I'm always fully medicated. Get educated. Get medicated. And that's what I got to say to you right now. Darren McCarty brand might have to save your life. And it's straight like that. I'm going to end it right mm-hmm. there. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>